Hi, welcome back to another session of Paint This with Jerry Arnell right here at the Arnell School of Fine Art. And we are going to have a great time today. This is the second session in this beautiful painting called Church in the Wild Wood. And this is a, a little setting that I did, I think I mentioned last week, of a watercolor uh, study that I did many years ago. I did about 30 or 40 of these little watercolor studies of old buildings and a lot of churches in the upper Midwest, in Oklahoma, Kansas. Uh, North and South Dakota, Nebraska, uh, and on up in those areas. And this is where this is up in the South Dakota area. And it's, it's kind of a fun thing to think about. There's some of these still out there, these old churches. And it's a great research trip to go out and find these old buildings out there. And we left off last week. Remember, this is an acrylic painting. It's an 18 by 24 horizontal format. And we were putting in all the distant trees that would give this that little bit of a edge of the forest. Obviously, if it's going to be Church of the Wildwood, we, you would think it's going to be in the woods somewhere, and it is, but this is the edge, and this is the area right here where we're going to put the church. We blocked in the snow, the interpain for the snow, and a little bit where the road's going to go. We left this section open here to, to, to do the eroded banks, which we're going to talk about this here today. But right now, I want, to, I want you to do me a favor. We're going to take our soft fine charcoal, and we're going to make only a very light rough sketch of where the church is going to go. This may not be the exact finish. And by the way, you can put any building or church you want to in there. I just happen to like this one because it sort of fits the format of my. So I'm going to put it about right here. And you may not even be able to see this very well, folks, but I want to see where it's going to sit before I add any of the larger trees. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and block the church in. And I'm not going to draw on the steeple. There's no reason to do that. I mostly just want the structure. And then I'll also be able to see how to readjust the road. It's going to actually go in behind the church, maybe back in the forest there, end up back in there. You can do all kinds of fun little things with that. You can put a little lean-to shed over here on the back side. I've actually attended some of these churches in, over the years. Great little fun things to do. Okay, now then, that's probably about where I want to go with that's a pretty simple structure, but like this, you can put any one you, you want into in there. All right, now that we know where that's going to go, and now you can see, if you go over here to the reference material now, I'm going to have them close in on this little piece here. This was the original watercolor painting I did um, many years ago, not the getting to the painting. Okay, so now we've sketched in the main body of the church. We've got all the distance in there. We've got the soft, delicate sunset. We didn't want a real bright sunset that we did. Not what, not what I was after. Now we're going to start blocking in the intermediate shaped trees that are behind the building that are a, a little, little bit bigger than the ones we did. Now I put one in there just to show you this one right here. That was just a little bit taller or, and a little bit more dominant. We're going to put several more of those, a couple big ones, that are going to come a little closer into the foreground. Not immediately behind the building, but just another inch or half an inch in front. And so go back to your script brush, a lot of script brush work, folks, down here to your, a gray mixture. So we're going to take the ultramarine blue, a little burn upper, a little bit of white now. Our background is dry, so you need to add the white to get the value correct. You want these trees to be just a little darker than the ones you did last time. So you obviously do that by just eliminating the white, or not, not eliminating, but eliminating some of it. So now you're going to start over here on the right hand side. And once again, learning how to use your script brush is important. Start at the base, come up like this, and notice, see that's a little bit darker than the one we did last week. And you can be a little bit more in control. What I mean by that, I think I mentioned last time that you know, the first one were just little wispy trees to create sort of the collection of trees in the distance to start the edge of the forest. Well, these are going to be a little more dominant, and some of these can go all the way off the, the canvas. That's another thing that I struggle with. A lot of you are afraid to take your limbs and stuff off the canvas. Don't be afraid. That adds a lot of interest to it. Let's see. Yeah, there's a, quite a few of the larger ones here. Learning how to use a script brush is the critical if you're going to be a landscape painter. Well, with this style, keep in mind you can make trees all kinds of ways. You can 
you know, kind of brushes. I'm not advocating that there's only one way to make trees, because there's not. But the point is, for this style, this technique, and if you want to do these kind of things, this brush is imperative. And it's, it's a fascinating thing to learn how to use a script brush. I was taught this when I was 19 years old by a lady. I was teaching back then, believe it or not, and I was in a little tiny building in a small town not too far from where I live. And I was teaching a small group of, of students. And this older lady, I think she was, you know, in her, in her late 80s, almost 90 years old, she came up to me and said, let me show you something, young man. And she pulled out this brush. I'd never seen it before. And she called it a script brush. Some people call them riggers. Uh, there's all kinds of names for them. Pretty soon you can make your own name for it if you struggle with it. But it's a really finely tipped brush with long hair. It gives you the flexibility to create these trees with a lot of taper. Now, we've got those there. Let's come over here right behind the church. These are not the ones next to the church, but they are still behind the church here. A little bit like that. And you know, this just starts building up this mass of forest. It's so cool. So I learned this when I was 19 years old. And I love working with a script brush. It's great for hair on birds, animals, great for the little birds and things that you do. They're flying weeds, twigs. Good signing your name with. It's almost like a, a calligraphy brush in a sense. If you've ever used one, they're flexible so you can make all kinds of angles and swirls and things. Okay, so now we're getting this done back in there. Now one thing I'm going to do that's a little different in this painting that I didn't do. By the way, whenever you do a, a watercolor or a sketch or a study or a pastel on, the, on location, don't think that when you get back to your studio, you've got to duplicate that. One thing I'm missing here that I wish I had done on the watercolor is right behind the building here, I'm going to put a small cedar tree that's dark uh, so that the building will stand out a little bit more in front of it. So after we get these next two or three trees in here, the next thing we're going to do is put our cedar trees in that are behind the building. That will give you the format for your contrast a little bit kicks in, light against dark, dark against light. And we'll be doing that here in just a couple of minutes. Well, we're going to go on the other side now. Over here, let's get a couple of larger trees. See, these will go kind of on up here. And let me tell you a little thing to do. If you guys are struggling with this script brush, and, and, and most of us do, I mean, this is not something you learn in just one, you know, sit down. You'll, you'll do, it sounds like a lot, but you'll do hundreds of trees uh, to get the hang of this. And notice I'm always angling it. I'm holding it way back towards the end. Don't paint straight on. Paint straight on, you'll never get the, the look that you're after and the feel for it. See that cool? Now see, this brings this group of trees a little more in the foreground. Now this is where your value system really begins to be your best friend. And you get all this depth. People look at your painting and like, man, how did you do that? Well, it's all about values. Just making darker values come forward makes the painting have depth. So see how far back some of that is. You can see way back to the forest. This is just an amazing thing. Don't be afraid of it. Gonna come over here, put one. Now we're going to put more, but they'll be bigger. They'll be darker. They'll be fatter. They'll be taller. So each time we come forward, all those components create that depth that we all need in our painting and interest. Better composition, good eye flow. All right. Now this rare, folks, to be honest with you, that we put this much emphasis on the script brush and painting, but when you're doing a forest, you almost don't have much choice. Let me show you something else don't, you don't want to do. I just did it. It's probably not a big deal because we've got other things to go in there. But when you put trees in, notice you don't want to put even space between each one because it gets too monotonous. So be sure you're always cognizant of this rule, you know, where you're breaking up your negative space so it's more interesting to look at. Like the little talk we had about putting something in the center. Well, it's okay to put that church in the center of the painting if you've got all these other things around it to break up the negative space so it doesn't appear to be in the center. So, you know, there's all kinds of things you can do. 
I guess that old saying, rules are meant to be broken. Well, guess what, folks? In the art world, that's exactly true. That's why they call it artistic license. Yes, we need to follow technical things to make a painting work right, to give good, whatever you want to call it, good eye feel. But man, the sky's the limit. So just because you're watching this show and you're hearing me talk about things, that doesn't mean that's the only way. Experiment. There's all kinds of neat ways to be an artist. Even palette knife work. I'm going to be doing some of that here on the show sometime. Anything that's that's artsy is is good. You know, I've seen people use all kinds of things to paint with. You know, everything from spatulas and toothbrushes, which we use toothbrush. So don't be afraid to experiment. Okay, now I think that's enough of the intermediate shaped trees. Now let's put that little cedar tree right here, or a couple of them. So let's switch down to our number four um, bristle brush. Let's go down here somewhere on our dirty palette. Probably still making fun of me about that. Take your hooker's green, and a little bit of purple, a little bit of white, to change the value. Remember, white is your value changer. You want to keep that in mind. So if you want to lighten the color, you just add the white to it. And of course, we don't want to be this green, so that's why we add the purple. That yeah, creates that sort of a grayish green. Not that I don't know if that's the right color. We got to test it. Mm. Let's put a little more purple in with that. We're not after a lot of green in this painting. We just want to keep it on the gray side. That's better. All right, what you're going to do now is you just take this brush and you just make yourself a little, whatever you want to call it, this little line, and then you just spread it out like this. Just kind of rock your brush back and forth right behind the building. And you start stretching this tree out to where you get the shape you want. Now, you're going to put snow on it probably, or a little bit of snow. Like I said, we don't want a real heavy snow in this painting. We just want enough snow to make it look like it's either just starting or or actually it wouldn't be just starting on the sun's there, it's probably just ended. Or maybe it's been there for several days and it's starting to melt or whatever you want to create. That's where being an artist is fun. Let your audience figure it out. You know, I heard this great story many years ago about that because remember you're not responsible for anything except getting your viewer on the road of seeing what it is you want them to see. The human mind, the human eye, the heart, everybody we're smart enough to figure out that that's a tree. You don't need to put every tree in place. Just correctly place them where it creates good eye flow. You can figure out those are trees without every tree being perfectly formed. Like this cedar tree, I'm not going to sit here and work it to death. I just want to get the basic shape. No one knows what that is. See, that's what's called suggestionism. The beauty of being an artist. Okay, see there's that, that little cedar, some type of pine tree, wherever you want it to be. You can put your own kind of evergreen in there. Maybe you have one in your backyard you want to put in there. That's up to you. Okay, now that I've got that shape, I'm going to put just a couple of small ones along the base back here. They're embedded sort of in the forest to also add just a little bit more interest to the painting. And we're going to have our road kind of meander back in there. But this little bit of a darker green against that lighter grayish background really looks, it looks good. Okay, that's all we need for that. So we've got those three trees in there now, and that'll help set the contrast real down. Now, let's work on this corner. I want to get this done and anything else that we can get underpainted today. We need to do so. Let's go back to our number six bristle brush. Here, somewhere there it is, and we're going to create this bank now. If you've ever done one of these eroded banks, they're a lot of fun to do. Like I said, being an old country boy from Oklahoma, we have a lot of these washed out banks. So this is the way they kind of look from a sketched point of view. So they're going to have this little wash on the front and it just kind of flattens out back here and we'll have some brush and stuff on top and some, like that so there was a little wash right here in front that's going to go into the road 
Yeah, because oh, we didn't talk about this. I, I meant to do this at the beginning of the show, but you have to have establish a light source here. Now, if you think about this for a second, this is another controversy, especially if you're kind of new to the art world. Where is the light source? Well, in this case, I'm going to make it come from the right hand side, okay? But I can already hear the comments. But the sky is lighter over here. Shouldn't your sun be over there? No. Keep in mind, folks, when you have a sunset or a sunrise, the horizon creates color all along the horizon forever. So the sun can be anywhere. It can just be lighter in some spots because of the clouds and so forth. Now, granted, if you have the actual sun or the glow of the sun from a source, you would have to, it would be dictated where it's at. In this case, that horizon, this stuff could be on either side. It can be off the canvas. So don't be afraid to put the sun's direction anywhere you want it. In this case, I want it to come from the right. So the, the banks here, the reason I'm bringing that up is because these banks will be darker on this front side. So you want to take your umber, a little bit of purple, maybe a little sienna, just triple load your brush, and just kind of come in here and underpaint these banks real quick. I just put the paint on thick enough, though, that you know, you get good coverage and you kind of feather into your underpainting from last week out here. Now, folks, this will change. This still is a good bit of underpainting going on here. We didn't get all of it underpainted last week. A little bit of umber, purple, and blue. A little darker down here in the corner. And these are sort of comma strokes. They just kind of swoop it. And this is just the, the edge of the road as it kind of meanders back in there in the distance. So I just put that little dark there. That's going to be where the mud or the dirt is going to show through the snow. Now, I know this looks really terrible, but that's just the way it starts. We've talked about that many, many times. Underpainting, it doesn't look like much. You have to have enough confidence in the process and in yourself to know that this is all going to work out. I am making sure that my canvas is covered fairly well, though. That's why you see me doing this. And I'm scrubbing it into the, the original road location. All right, now that that's been done, there's a lot of grass and brush and stuff that come in here. We'll put that in later. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to start thinking about some of the other closer up trees, the intermediate trees that are back in the distance. So now, Go back to your script brush again. Let's put a handful of some that are a little bit closer, a little bigger, and a little darker. So if you go back to your brown, this time go to umber and blue. Put in water to thin it. Just a little bit of white to slightly lighten it, but don't get it too light. And let's test this color and see if it's going to be dark enough. If not, we just add more blue and brown. But I think right now I want to put like one right here. This one, see, is a little closer. A little more, a little more formed. And what I mean by that, the other one, remember, we just whisked in there. This one's going to have just a tad bit more, con you just concentrate on the shape a little better, basically. But it's going to go all the way off the canvas. And you want to get it tapered nicely. So that's a part about how wide you want that one to be, see, like that. Now, once you kind of get your trunk, you can put a little fork on the bottom if you want a little sapling. That's a real common and fun thing to do. Then you can start branching off the limbs off the main tree. See, I'm in constant sort of perpetual motion, you might say. But learning to use the script brush will be your best friend. For a little while, it's your enemy. And there'll be times when you just want to throw it in the trash. But you don't give up, folks. I promise you, you'll love it. It's a good tool to have in your arsenal. Now, 
Now, after this session and our next one, everything starts to develop faster. The main thing is what's slowing us down this pain, as you can see, are all these trees. But you can't avoid it, so, you know, you can't just, you know, put not put the trees in there because this is the forest. And the more trees you put in here, frankly, the better the thing looks. It adds that little atmosphere, the ambiance of a deep forest. Let's put one over here on the right-hand side. Maybe it's kind of coming off the canvas. Just kind of let the branches go right off. You don't be afraid of that. See how cool that little section is right in there? Hey, can you believe we're already starting to run out of time? I tell you, these shows that don't last long enough, but the key right now is for you to focus on your trees to get them in there, and then we're going to start working on our snow. We'll start our, our church next week. Now, here's one thing you could be doing. Uh, start looking at your reference material. If you've got a particular little country church, maybe in your area where you live, or maybe you've got some files already on old buildings and you've got one, well, put whatever one you want in there. Let it be all yours. My job is only to give you technical advice, and the rest is up to you. Okay, now, I like this one on the corner, on the edge over here, because it kind of, Help with the eye stopper issue. Now let's go over here to the left hand side real quick. Let's put one more. We'll go way over here, probably about right here. We'll put one down a little bit further into the painting. So you just use the same procedure. A little umber, blue, and purple. Plenty of water, in it down, roll your brush, twist it to get that nice point. And here we go. Get the structure, go all the way up off the canvas. The important thing, folks, is to be sure that it is in proportion to itself and to the other trees. And what I mean by that is, as it grows up and tapers, it's got to gradually get smaller, but don't get it too skinny too quick, and don't get it too fat at the top. It's got to be a gradual taper. And by the way, don't worry about the base. You're going to put snow and grass and brush and you know, all kinds of stuff there under it, so don't worry about that. This is a good lesson on how to use a script brush, so I'm glad we're doing this, even though it's kind of time consuming. But I've done this for all my life, folks, and I still love this brush. I can't wait to use it when I'm working on a painting. I think it's fascinating. See, this, this tree is fairly dominant. It's got a, a pretty good shape of its own that stands out in front of the others. So be sure you have a little fun. Don't be afraid to have a wet paper towel handy. If you are, you know, if you make a bad limb, you can just take a wet paper towel and wipe it off and uh, wipe it back in towards the paint, the painting or the tree and then you can just rebuild it. Okay, I think I've got enough here because I'm anxious to get on to a couple of other things. So let's do this. Now, the first thing I want to do is start a little bit of the distant snow. So let's switch now to the number four uh, bristle brush. I'm going to rinse it out real good. And we're going to go to the white. Take your gesso. Just a teeny touch of orange. Now, one of the things you're always going to remember about painting, especially when you're uh, using white, is, well, look, there's a sort of a rule, if you want to call it, never use pure white. Always use a tint of white. There's some great ways to mix different tints of white. I'm not saying pure white's not useful, and it is in some cases, but when you're doing something like this, always tint it. So, see, I put a little bit of uh, orange in it. You can put a little yellow in it. You'd be great with something else. But just kill it from being so pure white. And the reason for that is because your painting looks more alive, okay? And right now what we're going to do is we're going to come in back here. Now I want to watch this. In this area back in through here, behind the, in the forest, and back on the other side over there. Take your brush now, and I want you to start developing and drifting your snow. Then I take my finger, and I kind of blur it. Because I want to create a little bit of a hazy effect.
And you might say, why didn't you put the snow in first? Well, the reason why is because 90% of the time when you put the snow in first, you put too much. And then you still got to go back and figure out how to blur it and blend it. So what I'm doing here is I'm just dragging and smudging and smearing back in amongst the trees back there so it looks a little bit scattered. It's okay if you can get the edge of the tree a little bit and soften the capers. As you come forward, see I'm scrubbing it back and forth in a little bit of a kind of a little bit of a raised effect to try and create the movement. And this is what where you start coming into the edge of the road just a little bit. And we'll still do some work on that road. We'll probably have to open it up a little bit back in there. Or maybe we want to go in between these two trees right there. Let's see how I'm dragging my brush like this. And be sure you leave pockets of what? Uh, I wish I could hear it. And I hope you're saying it. Yes, negative space. So don't clog up all your snow. Yeah, I'm even going to take my brush kind of feather the base of the tree out there. Just blend it into that. Now, I might mention, if this is too dry, your painting will have that real rough, scratchy look to it. You don't want that. You really want it to have a soft blend, so be checking your moisture content all the time. That's another battle we fight all the time back at the school, is you get too much uh, moisture in there, and, I mean, not enough moisture, and it gets too dry. It's that real scratchy look. Okay, so let me give you an example. You want to be, see how it goes on? Scrub it, and that way there's no hard, scratchy lines. So just keep scrubbing this down into here and leaving these little pockets. See, I'm leaving these little pockets of negative space. That's where we'll put the brush, the bushes, and all the other things that make this painting really come alive. This is going to be really cool. Well, as usual, folks, we're starting to run out of time. So what I'm going to do is give you a little homework assignment here. Get your larger intermediate trees in and then start practicing this snow because after next week, or during next week's session, we, this painting's going to take on a whole new life. I'm going to probably resketch my house a little bit. So I want to thank you for joining us today. God bless you. Stay inspired. I hope you can join us again right here real soon on another se session of Paint Tooth with Jerry Arnell. Episodes of Paint This with Jerry Arnell are available at Garden.